Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, I've got some exciting news for everybody out there in the Harvest Right world. Uh, today, we're going to take our first look at a new pump. A new pump which shipped starting today, November 20th, with all freeze dryers that they shipped today. And from here on, all freeze dryers are going to come with this new pump. So we're going to take a look at it in detail. We're going to make some measurements uh, with it and comparing with the previous pump, the JB uh, 6 CFM pump. Harvest Right is also going to be making these pumps available if you want to upgrade your pump. I'm not at liberty to talk about the pricing on that right now, but as soon as they give me the okay, I'll put some details in the text below. Um, and so anyway, let's go ahead and look at the original pump this is the JB pump, 6 CFM, half horsepower, weighs about 29 pounds. Now I did some measurement uh, with the original pump to do a comparison with the new pump. And so one thing I wanted to know was how long it took to get to an actual vacuum of 500 millitor. So the measurement on that worked out to 4 minutes and 25 seconds. The new pump was right in that same kind of time frame, but we'll look at that here in a minute. Now the JB was definitely louder on startup compared to the new pump. It was about 6 dB louder. Um, the reading was 73.7 dB on the A-weighted scale. The noise level went down, of course, by the time it got to 500 millitor, and the reading at that time was 61.4 dB A. Now let's take a look at the new Harvest Right branded uh, pump. This is actually a 7.2 CFM pump. It's a three-quarter horsepower. Now it turns out um, when they built the Harvest Right, they set it up so that it could handle a, a larger pump. And so existing Harvest Right owners will be able to plug in the new uh, pump directly into their Harvest Right and it'll be able to handle the three-quarter horsepower load. The amount of time it took the new pump to get to 500 millitors of vacuum, it uh, turned out to be almost identical. 4 minutes, 27 seconds. And that difference is, you know, could be the amount of time it took me to press a button. The pump was definitely quieter when it first started up by about 6 dB. The measurement was 67.9 dBA. And the average by the time it got to 500 millitor was pretty much the same reading as the JB. It worked out to 62.2 uh, dB on the A-weighted scale. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the footage that I shot uh, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, you'll be able to see some of these measurements. I also made some measurements having to do with the noise and the frequency component. And we'll take a look at that as well, but you'll see these uh, dB measurements uh, in this video as well. Now the interesting thing was, I made a mistake when I was shooting some of this footage, and the first time I fired up the new Harvest Right pump, I actually forgot to close the valve, um, the drain valve on the uh, Harvest Right freeze dryer, and so it was actually sucking air. Now, if that had happened when I had the JB pump hooked up, um, a lot of us had run into that and we know that the JB pump would have spit oil. That's why a lot of us have put together a little oil catcher uh, like the one uh, that I showed on the YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that. Um, but anyway, fortunately I made that mistake with the new pump because uh, the new pump didn't blast oil all over the place, so I was really thrilled about that. Let's go ahead and roll the rest of the test footage and there'll be a little bit of extra commentary at the end. All right, sit back and enjoy about 20 minutes of testing with the new pump from Harvest Right. Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, today is gonna to be a fun Harvest Right pump day and I get a chance to show you a new pump they're gonna start shipping with new freeze dryers. You probably know all the Harvest Right freeze dryers have shipped with a JB Industries pump, a 6 CFM pump, and those pumps have a couple of little quirks. And uh, anyway, Harvest Right has selected a new pump. It's a 7 CFM pump, so it's a little faster in, in terms of evacuating the chamber but it's also got some improvements 
that hopefully will address some of the issues some of us have run into with the JB pump. So I'm going to give you a sneak preview at the new pump and compare it with the existing JB pump. That's the standard pump that comes with uh, all the harvest rights up until now. And this one is a 6 CFM. Looks like this. It's got uh, a few things you recognize. You fill the oil up here and the handle is actually the vent. Okay, so as the pump is developing vacuum on this port, that, um, that exhaust, that pressure exhausts out of the handle and then uh, Harvest right made this little uh, demister piece uh, that goes on the end of the handle. Okay, now in comparison, on this one, you fill the oil back here, the handle is actually solid, and the front part of the pump is vented with this plastic part. This part is also the demister. Now we also know that the check valve in the JB pump has caused some people some problems over the years and uh, the valve on this one is a different design. It's supposed to do a much better job of preventing a backflow of oil out of this particular pump. So let's take a look at some other things. I'm going to turn these sideways and you can see on the JB this has always been a little bit of an issue because the, the drain has been way up underneath it here and it's very hard to get a hold of. You'll see that on this one, it's out front and it's much easier to drain. Um, now, on this particular one, you can see that this part is actually bowed. It's actually got a, got a bow to it like that. This got hammered a little bit in shipping, so I'm gonna pull that apart and, and uh, straighten that. But what's supposed to happen is this is supposed to be the low point and you can see that it's actually lower back here in the back on this one. Um, but anyway, this is supposed to be the low point so that you can drain it fully uh, and much more accessible out here in the front. Now if you look at the two pumps side by side, you see that this one is a little bit longer. And the reason for that is there's a, a big fan in the back. Now the fan not only cools the inside of the motor, but there's a housing here that directs airflow on all of these fins that are built into the motor. So this does a better job of cooling the motor. And this center housing section in here also has cooling fins. And the front housing also has cooling fins as opposed to the JB model. Now another thing that's come up with the original JB pump is the rear seals have a tendency to leak. And um, mine actually leaked, I think, in about four months or so. And I replaced the seal. This is actually my spare pump that I used for, I think, two days while I was fixing my other one. Anyway, let me show you um, why that occurs, or at least one of the reasons. Um, let's back up and take a look at the front of these again. Okay, first off, you'll notice on the original JB, the center line for the motor is about right about right here, okay, and that lines up about right here on the pump, but you actually fill the pump all the way up to this level. That means that the entire seal, which is about this big in the back, that entire seal is completely covered in oil the entire time. Okay, we also saw in one of the other videos where I actually replaced the rear seal, back in here there was a channel behind the uh, pump valve cartridge I guess it's called the yeah I think it's called the pump cartridge there was a channel back there that allowed oil to pass from the top to the bottom but it also allowed particles to pass back in here and uh, those could hold moisture and sit back there uh, where the seal was and eventually the the seal itself has a little spring that keeps this nice and tight keeps the the seal tight, eventually the spring would rust and break and then all of a sudden this couldn't stay on really tight on the shaft. Okay, This apparently has a completely different design um, and it's less susceptible to any kind of leakage like that. Now let me show you a couple things about this. So the center line on this motor is about right here 
which works out to about right here on the front and you fill the oil to this level um, and so anyway the the seal itself is not completely submerged all the time this is supposed to improve that uh, that leak issue um, and that combined with where it's located back in here uh, it's supposed to be a better design I have not seen the internals on this and I haven't uh, you know I haven't had a chance to take this apart yet either I probably won't unless it leaks anyway that's supposed to be a big improvement as well and uh, so anyway other than that this original pump is about 27 pounds this one's about 36 I believe now on the back you'll see that uh, both of these have a switch for on off this one actually says on off and this one has zero which is usually off and a one which is usually on um, and so they actually work backwards so up on this one is on and down on this one is on both of these use this new style uh, fitting up here that goes with this style hose this hose has an o-ring seal in it and so to be able to use the new pump on my harvest right um, they sent me one of these connectors so I'm supposed to uh, replace the one that's on the side of the harvest right with this one then I can run this new hose <coughs> now this new hose is shorter than my other hose so it means the pumps are going to have to be up higher um, and so I'm going to leave my setup the way it is with my existing pump because I've got some other tests I want to do on that one um, but I'm going to set both of these up on the top I'm going to replace this we're going to use the new hose and do some testing on both of these and uh, you know see what happens now to use the new style hose um, this connector up in here has to be replaced with this one so I'm gonna go ahead and take this hose off uh, this is my cool little right angle adapter that uh, allowed me to tuck in the hose a little tighter anyway uh, I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna take the side panel off also and then while I've got this off I can go ahead and vacuum out um, you know this cooler back in here that uh, that I haven't done anything with for 10 months 11 months now I've got some sound panels positioned to kind of quiet things down at the test location now this is uh, one meter away from the pump which is a standard measurement uh, kind of distance so we have two devices going on we have an iPad that's going to look at the noise spectrum and then we also have an iPhone uh, 6 plus that's measuring the sound pressure level okay and uh, I've got a little note here that this is the JB pump so once I start this test I can't talk I can add you know audio uh, descriptions later but I can't talk while this is going on so I think we're all set up um, one thing about this is it has a peak um, DB measurement I'm gonna reset this and then I can't say anything
Okay, well, that test is done. That looks good. And actually, we're at 392 millibars on the JB. I'm going to hit cancel. And we're going to go ahead and shut this down. So, actually, that's uh, consistent with what I've seen before. So now we're going to get the other pump hooked up and make the same measurements. I think we're all set for the new Harvestrite 7 CFM pump. That's what I'm calling it, so you'll see that in this video. Um, and so anyway, it's all hooked up, ready to go. And I have no experience with this demister, so if it starts, you know, doing goofy things, I may have to put a rag over it, uh, but we'll see what happens. Now, I'm going to reset this stuff again. Um, I've got the, the uh, FFT on two-second decay right now, and I'm going to reset this because of the max number. We, we want that DB max to be reset, so I'm going to go silent. And then we're going to get this set up. So here we go. Okay, had a little error on this one. I'm gonna stop this because I forgot to shut the valve. So we're gonna do this again. The nice thing about that is it didn't spit oil all over the place with my operator error. So we're gonna get set up again.
One thing you'll notice from that video is that the pump put out sort of a, a fine smoke, almost like the kind of smoke you see from a fog machine um, or maybe a cigarette. It did that for about a minute while it was developing the vacuum. Now Harvestrite did tell me that this pump was going to do that. Uh, this one was sent to me before they finalized the design for the demister. So anyway, they're going to be sending me a demister that I'll be re replacing this one. And then I'll do some additional testing on that uh, in the future. Now the other thing that I wanted to do, and I haven't done that yet, is to do an entire batch with both pumps, an identical batch, the same food, the same weight, and then see if the new pump does actually uh, decrease the total amount of time needed to uh, process an entire batch. So anyway, that's going to happen in the future. If you're interested in seeing uh, the results of that, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And uh, as soon as I do that, I'll put that up for you. Anyway, that's about all the experience I have with this new pump. And so for now, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out. I know somebody is going to ask how I did that rotating pump footage. Well, I've got a green screen set up here and uh, some lighting. And I've got the pump situated on top of a rotary stage. This is rotated by a compu motor, uh, step motor, and a compu motor micro stepping motor drive. And that's getting the pulses to do the rotation from this function generator down here. And then uh, there's a big frame for the green screen set up. And actually behind it is a black screen that I was using for a different video that I was working on this weekend. So anyway, that's the scoop. Uh, hope you enjoy that little inside look into the weirdness of the epicenter.